Hello, everybody. Hi, it's so great to see you. Welcome to Friday. Today is, uh, wow, July the 21st. It's so great to see everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, heads up, if I lose you part of the way, our internet has been acting shady today. I think that's going to be my new theme, and I, I absolutely do not like that at all. Internet's been fantastic all week long until this morning. Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? I've reset the modem a couple times. I think that might have resolved our issue, but uh, we're going to continue on with today's live. I'm just letting you know if I lose you, that's why. And we do have some storms coming in. I have some really dark clouds over that way that are making their way through. I hope that doesn't mess me up. Hi, everybody. I want to thank my moderators as we get started today. It's so great uh, that you all are here. Thank you all so much. Today, we're going to be making the Bless This Home Trivet. Confession, I have not made this trivet yet. I'm going to be making it with you today live. Uh, this not only could be used as a trivet by doubling up your batting or using uh, like insole braid. You could just use one layer of batting and make this a cute, adorable li little centerpiece for your table or a wall quilt. Um, lots of stuff you could do with this, right? I also think this pattern lends to a lot of um, creative uses like omitting the words and even the stripes on this trivet. And it gives you some great space to do some other applique items, right? So you could change up the applique and make this pattern all your own. Thank you, Catherine. <clears throat> and on another note of uh, sort of terrible news, um, y'all remember a couple weeks ago when I was sewing, you couldn't hear my sewing machine? That's because I was using this particular laptop that I'm using today. Today, you're not going to be able to hear my sewing machine. There's some setting in this laptop. I can't figure it out. Um, <clears throat> I can't figure it out. So the last time we streamed live, I was using my original laptop. The laptop I use for everything, right? Printing photos, processing all of that stuff, creating patterns. Yesterday, while I was cutting out the applique for today's live class, I was using my scan and cut. My laptop had a critical error on the hard drive, and I have to replace the hard drive on that computer. Out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, so yeah, today you're not going to be able to hear my sewing machine, and I know that that really um, messes with the video, so I just apologize ahead of time. But the good news is I have a computer. I'm done with laptops for streaming. I have a super duper chunky, beefy tower on its way to me with lots of USB ports for cameras and uh, a super fast processor. So uh, that'll be here in a couple of days. I hope next week, I hope next week is better than this week, y'all. <laughs> you just had weeks that you're just like, Oh my gosh, what else could possibly happen this week? I don't know. So, um, Patreon, if you are a Patreon member, I think my internet is good enough that we can do our quilt retreat. Give me 15 minutes after we're done with the live stream today and you'll find the link to join the quilt retreat on the Patreon page. And for those of you who are, there's still a couple of you who are, are having issues with Patreon. I'm going to post a link to join the Zoom on our Patreon Facebook page as well. So you'll still be able to join even if you're having problems accessing the Patreon page. Sheila said, you can make sound machine noises for us. Remind me, Sheila, when we get over there. <laughs> Remind me when we get to that part. <laughs> and I do want to show you a quick preview. So let me switch you over to what we're doing next week. Because it's super cute. <clears throat> you see it right here? <clears throat> Sorry. I just like 
I just ate a Chick-fil-A sandwich in less than a minute. Yo, it was not a pretty sight. <laughs> it was not pretty at all. Harlan just got home and he brought me a Chick-fil-A sandwich. I think we had five minutes left to go when I started eating it. And I think we had four minutes to go when I was done. That is the fastest I've ever eaten, but now I'm having a hard time. So let me just show you a preview of what we're doing next week. Lord willing, we have internet. <laughs> we're going to, uh, yes, we're doing the quilt retreat after the live today. After today's project, this trivet, we're going to switch into doing some quilt ideas. And um, how many of you have made baby quilts for shower gifts, right? Uh, the next couple of weeks, I have some really cute applique designs that I want to share with you. And the applique design itself, the PDF, the tracing templates will be free. However, I've put together a quilt idea, right? And uh, I have all of the measurements to put together a cute little quilt using the applique. And if you're like me and you have a cutting machine and you want the cutting file for the applique, this package will be in my Etsy shop, right? But the applique tracing templates will be free. So stay tuned. The next couple weeks, um, isn't that super cute? Hazel Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is sort it's a fast food restaurant over here and they make chicken sandwiches like that's their specialty is chicken sandwiches and uh, waffle fries with Chick-fil-A sauce. I wish I could send you one. It would not be good by the time I got over to you, but Chick-fil-A is one of my favorite sandwiches. Yes, isn't the baby carriage so cute? Now you could uh, switch out the colors, right? You could make it uh, neutral, you know, if you don't know what you're having, boy or girl. You could do pinks, you could do blues, you could do nursery colors. Um, isn't that super cute? Now, the quilt idea that um, I put together a pattern for is 49 by 60. But you could certainly make this smaller if you wanted to, right? Just by reducing the number of blocks that you made. Maybe you make a little, you know, uh, a bassinet quilt or a quilt to drape in the car, on the car seat, or one for the baby to carry around as they start growing up. Um, but yeah, so next week we're going to be doing the baby carriage. Now I have a confession to make. This one that you see here... I brought the SVG, the cutting file, into Embrilliance and I digitized it. So I actually stitched this out on my embroidery machine. <laughs> it's been a long time since I did that. And uh, <laughs> I'm quite sure that I didn't digitize it in the most efficient way because I had a lot of jump stitches here and there. But I made it through and uh, I think it turned out super cute. Yes, isn't that cute? So that's what we're doing next week, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and jump into this trivet. And today, guess what? I'm going to do a traditional binding with you. A lot of the times I use the back as the binding. Because <laughs> it is super cute and super easy and fun, right? Um, but today I made a traditional binding. And I'm hoping that for those of you who are extremely new, or maybe you've made maybe you've made quilts for as long as you can remember, and binding was always like you just you can't stand binding the quilt, right? I'm gonna show you the way I do it on some smaller projects. Uh, it's a quick quick little uh, way to connect the ends. And um, while I certainly wouldn't do this for any quilt I was putting in a quilt show that's going to be judged, I think for today's project, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> and most of my quilts, it's absolutely fine, too. Okay, everybody. It's so great to see y'all. 
I still have a green light on my internet, so we're going to get started. Let me turn on my iron and get her warming up. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so the PDF, y'all get the PDF right now while you can. It's free for a week. Now, if you ha you've already downloaded the PDF, but you want to go ahead and get the cutting file, the cutting file is the stars and the words. Then there's another link in the description box, y'all, for that, okay? The complete package with the cutting file. The PDF is free for a week, so go ahead and grab it while you can. Uh, it gives you simple step-by-step -step instructions, right? And then um, the link for the video if you need to come back to it. And tracing templates that have already been mirror imaged so if you're using a fusible like Heat and Bond Light or Wonder Under, any of those, you're ready to start tracing, right? If you're going to use freezer paper for this, you need to trace from the back side using a window or a light pad. Okay, so um, today I'm going to start by just creating the layers of my quilt. We're going to go a little backwards this week. <laughs> and I want to note... As I pull this out, this is the back fabric I'm going to use. That was my aunt's. It's so pretty, isn't it? It's very, very old. The back fabric uh, on the pattern says to cut it at 14 by 14. That is an extra two inches to use the back fabric as your binding if you want to do a self binding on this project. I wanted to mention that because today I've already cut my back fabric at 12 inches by 12 inches because I'm going to use a separate binding and I wanted to eliminate a step of trimming away the extra backing fabric. So this has already been trimmed to 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm going to lay that right on my board with the right side facing down. And you all know me, I'm going to add some glue and start creating my layers. I'm going to be using two layers of warm and natural batting. Just add plenty of glue in there. <laughs> and I'm going to bring over my first layer. I've already cut this at 12 inches by 12 inches. And because I've cut everything exactly right, I just need to make sure that I center everything perfectly. No pressure. <laughs> Oopsie. I need to scoot it over just ever so slightly. Maybe I should have done it from this side. There we go. That's better. I'm going to dry this glue just a little bit. Yes, this week has been so stressful. It's like one thing after another. I don't know what in the world is going on. My laptop is not, I say it's not that old, but you know, we were thinking back on it yesterday. It's at least three or four years old. And let me tell you, I put that laptop through a lot. Live streaming on YouTube with three webcams, a separate microphone. That's a lot for any laptop to handle on a weekly basis for several years. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a heavy, heavy, like, stress on a laptop. But she's done it. Up until yesterday. Now I'm going to add some glue to this layer. And I'm going to bring in one more layer of batting. We're going to dry this layer of glue as we're putting on the top of this rivet. Now, if you've watched the last several of my lives, 
We've done some fun quilts that have required no sewing to put together the top. <laughs> this is the same way. Super easy. I got a big chunk of glue there. We're going to leave it. <laughs> Lisa, that's so true. I, I guess I've been really blessed that that laptop lasted as long as it did. I would have just continued to use this laptop that I'm using today. It is much newer. I just bought this less than a year ago. Um, but it's slightly different than my other laptop. And uh, there's some setting in it that eliminates all the background noise. And while I'm okay with that, a lot of people like to hear the background noise, especially the sewing machine. So, time to buy a computer. I do, I use my laptops a lot. <laughs> okay, so two layers of batting and our backing fabric, right? So let's start putting together the top of this trivet. And we're gonna start with, okay, so we have a white piece. Today I'm using like a tea stain. I think that's really pretty. And a blue piece. And we have three strips that we've cut to one inch. It was one inch by six and a half inches, right? Um, but before I cut them, I put heat and bond on the back of the red fabric, and then I cut my strips. So my strips still do like, or still, still do have the heat and bond paper on the back. Sorry, I got distracted because Harlan just sent me a message about the internet, so I tried to catch it. I put the heat and bond on it before I cut the strips out. So they are backed with fusible, which is going to help keep them in place as we sew them down, okay? So those are my main pieces that make up this trivet. And I'm going to move this up just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And we're going to scoot over so I'm not blocking any of it. <laughs> there we go. So uh, the measurements for these pieces are on the very first page. All right, we're gonna start with this white piece of fabric because ultimately the blue piece is gonna cover that raw edge. And then all we have to do is sew down this blue piece here, right? So let's go ahead and add, I don't think it matters on this fabric, which way is right and which way is wrong. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to this piece. If you have a spray basting, basting spray, you could use that too. I always forget to mention that. I would say you could add a fusible to this piece too, but that's a good chunk, right? Um, I'm a little tight with my stuff, <laughs> so I just used the glue, but you could use uh, Heat and Bond Light if you wanted to. The only thing about that is if you do that, your project is going to have fusible over the entire top and it might be a little stiffer. You might like that. So I'm just going to finger baste that right in place. And we're going to add these red strips before we add the blue piece in. Rhonda, um, I have used, so all the trivets that I've made with you, I've used two layers of the Warm and Natural. Now, I have set down casseroles from the oven onto my trivets and have been okay with that. Uh, I think it depends on the type of batting you're using. Uh, and maybe I've gotten really lucky, like I don't know. If you're really, really, really worried about the heat from your pots on your tables and countertops, then my suggestion is to omit the batting altogether and use a product like Insulbrite. 
because that's actually designed to absorb the heat and protect, right? So if this makes you nervous and you want to use it as a trivet, then by all means, use the insole bright. Cheryl, I've never known a basting spray to gum up the needle, um, but I stopped using basting sprays quite some time ago because they're a little bit costly. <laughs> And the smell from them gives me a little bit of a headache. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. I've never noticed it to gum up my sewing machine when I used it, though. All right, so we have our red stripes. I'm going to go ahead and just peel off the heat and bond now. And the reason I didn't do this beforehand to prep for today's video is because this little strip is the perfect spacer for our red stripes and I didn't want to lose it. <laughs> now the only thing about this um, these red stripes and I don't think I mentioned that in the pattern because I didn't really even think about it but today I'm just going to give you a little tip. And that's one of the things I like doing during the videos right? When we add our binding, it's going to come up over the very edge of our quilt, right? See that? So if we were to place this red strip right on the very edge, we're going to have our binding come into that red strip a little bit. And it's going to make that red strip on the very edge, the right edge, appear thinner than the other two red strips. So I'm going to scoop mine over just to adjust for that a little bit. I do want the binding to come over it some, but not eat into it halfway. So I'm just going to accommodate for that and just scoot that very first red stripe over just a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and fuse that down. I keep checking my green light. We still got a green light. <laughs> I have been so stressed out this morning. All right, so there's my first stripe fused into place. Now I'm going to use the piece that I just peeled off the back to space this over. Like so. And we're lining up the very raw edge of the stripe with this fabric. And I'm gonna fuse that in place. And then I'm going to use my spacer one more time and we're going to add this last fabric. Does that look pretty straight? There we go. And we're fusing. Now we can add the blue fabric at the bottom. And it's going to cover up all of those raw edges. And that piece we're just lining up to the very bottom of all of those layers. And we're going to dry the glue on this part because we haven't hit that with the iron and the blue part.
Mimsy said, yay for the green light. That green light is important. <laughs> Today, when I first came in to set things up, and I said, I, I'm just going to double check. I've been checking all week, right? I'm just going to double check, expecting it to be good. And I had a solid red light with some flashes of orange. I said, this is not good. <laughs> Immediate panic mode set in. All right, we're going to let that cool off for just a second. And I think we're done with the glue. Now the applique pieces, um, we have two smaller stars and a larger star, and then the word, the letters that say bless this home. Again, you could put all, I think what would be really cute is another star right in this uh, portion here. Uh, but like I said in the very beginning, you could omit the stripes and do some applique up here and something down here and totally change the look of this trivet right let's go ahead and set these stars in place the first one i'm just going to place right in the middle like that now keep in mind we're going to have some stitching along that raw edge and we're going to have a binding that comes along the bottom edge so just keep that in mind when placing your stars I'm going to sort of do mine a little bit like this. Remember, we're going to have a binding on that edge as well. There, I think that looks super cute, right? Let's go ahead and just fuse those pieces in place. Hey, everybody. Hello. Ooh, that's hot. Now it's going to take me a hot minute. Let me grab a little pokey tool. Because what I have left is a whole bunch of little letters. And I'm just going to let you know, somehow I lost a little dot of the eye. So I might just little, I saved a little scrap. <laughs> so I can maybe just by hand cut out a little dot for my eye, but I totally lost it. Doreen, you made your first t-shirt quilt. That's awesome. Okay, so let's situate all of these little letters. Yeah, I used my scan and cut to cut all these out and it was super fast until my hard drive crashed. <laughs> now, um, bless this home. What was I going to say? If the thought of sewing down these little letters is like so overwhelming for you that you're not going to make this trivet even though you want to, um, make sure you check out uh, the video that I did where I painted in the words because I think that is a much easier way versus fussy cutting if you don't have a cutting machine all of these letters and then sewing them down, right? Focus, Lisa. There we go. Yep, I lost the little dot to my eye. 
So what I'm going to do, and this will probably be the wonkiest part of this project. <laughs> I'm just going to cut myself out a little, not with those clips, I'm not. I'm going to cut myself out a little dot for the eye. I think it really needs it. There we go. That's not horrible. All right, so let me just scoot all this back in a little bit. Keep in mind, we're going to have the binding and binding, right? And I'm just going to fidget with this for a little bit. I mean, I'm okay if it's not completely lined up with perfect spacing. I think it is almost easier to make it look like you've on purpose <laughs> not spaced it out exactly perfect, right? You could probably sit here all day fiddling with this. When we get to it, I am going to put in the free motion foot. Let me just double check that. Looking on the screen is easier for me than at this angle. So <laughs> I think that that's okay. Before anything gets lost, I'm gonna fuse everything in place. Today I'm gonna use a free motion foot and stitch down these letters really quick. Could I use scrapbooking stamping ink for the letters? Absolutely. If you use, pardon me, uh, like an archival ink, a lot of those are permanent on fabric. If you haven't ever done it before, what I suggest you do, mainly for a project that you do intend on washing, like I intend on using this as a trivet, right? Well, that means food and pots and whatnot are going to be on this, which means eventually this will probably need to be washed. <laughs> um, so in that case, if the project is washed, you want to make sure you're using an ink that's not going to wash out, right? So uh, if you haven't tested the ink you want to use and you know you're going to wash your project, what I suggest is taking some scrap fabric um, and stamping on it and then throw it through the wash a couple of times when you're doing laundry and see how well that ink sets up right and even if it is like an archival permanent ink that you're using i don't think heat setting it is a bad idea this is going to help it stay in that fabric right doreen said some of my s's look different i might have some of them upside down <laughs> And they might be turned a little wonky. And I do think the polka dots are playing with my brain a little bit. But I might have one or two of the S's upside down accidentally. <laughs> okay. Um, I was undecided if I wanted to quilt this first. When I quilt this, I'm actually stitching down the applique in that, in that raw edge and those raw edges all at the same time. Or if I want to put the binding on, let's go ahead and do some sewing and then we'll do the binding, okay? Yep, so let's come over to the sewing machine. I have some brown thread in my sewing machine today. You're not gonna hear the sewing machine noises. And I'll entertain Sheila and make some noises for a second, but not the whole time. <laughs> uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, I'm not worried about the raw edge on the very right of 
this first strip because that's going to be covered by our binding, okay? But I will sew down this raw edge and then the other two on the other stripes. And then we're going to sew down this long raw edge on that top of the blue fabric. I love my new house. I don't like the internet service here. <laughs> oh, we had awesome internet before we moved. The internet service here, we have one provider in our area and it is so unreliable. That is my only downside. That's it. But I love the new house. I love the new studio. It gets really hot and humid in here in the afternoons. I still love it. And it's much smaller, but I still love it. All right, I have some brown thread in the top and the bobbin. Um, so, I, I mean, I hope you're going to see the stitches, but they might blend in, especially to these stripes, because it, this is sort of like a burnt red color. Not actually like maroon or red red. It's sort of like a burnt red. Uh, so that, I'm going to stitch on it, but I have a feeling the brown thread is going to just disappear right into it. All right, so, wow, you could really use all kinds of stitches for this, right? I think today I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch. And let me just set this zigzag stitch. I want to use a smaller one than that, so hold on a second. Take a look. Okay. So I'm going to tell you my settings. And you can start there. The stitch length is a 1.0. And the stitch width is a 3.0 on a zigzag stitch. All right, we're going to sew down this first stripe first. Uh, I think I want to turn it around. With my zigzag stitch because it starts in the right hand position and stitches over to the left. And I want my zigzag stitches to be primarily in that red stripe and not in this white stripe, right? So I'm going to start right at the base of the blue fabric. I'm not even going to do a back stitch here because once I've stitched down these stripes, I'm going to come along and stitch down that raw edge of the blue fabric. And I really feel like that stitch is going to lock down all of these stitches. I'm sorry you can't hear the noise of the sewing machine. <laughs> all right, and I'm going to go ahead and just do all of this side while we're right here. And then we're going to flip it around and do the other sides. Yep, and then, so this week my hard drive went bad. Uh, day before yesterday, the arm that I bought specifically to hold my sewing machine camera, that broke. <laughs> I really like the quilty texture of the double layer of batting. I know it's hard to see that, but in person, it's got a lovely quilted texture because of that two layers of batting.
All right, now I'm just going to raise that needle up and flip everything around because now we're going to do coming down these two stripes on the right side. Where's my little snips? I'm going to go ahead and snip these threads. I'm going to stop right when my needle touches that blue fabric. Right there, needle touching the blue fabric. Now I'm using my thread cutter, which actually ties a little knot on the back. So I would be okay even if I didn't have to stitch this down. Um, a lot of times I don't like using my thread cutter though. So it would be really important that I stitch over the start and stops of these stitches to make them permanent, right? Lock them in. All right, so let's go ahead and use that very same zigzag stitch and sew down the raw edge of this blue fabric. I feel like this is one of those projects that when you see it, it looks way harder than it actually is. So um, I kind of love those types of projects. I saw Doreen asked about my sewing machine, but thank you all so much for typing that in. Just letting you know, Doreen. <laughs> It's not this quiet in real life. My computer filters out this noise for some reason. Now I wish that you could feel this. Because if you love texture like I do, all oh, the two layers of batting make that really nice. Now let's just talk about this for a second. Let me see if I have any threads. Okay. There is so much that you could do with the applique with these stars. Like if I wasn't doing a traditional binding with you today and I didn't have a quilt retreat after today's live, I would probably take the time to do a blanket stitch because I think that would be adorable on these stars. Like all the fabrics I've used um, are sort of vintage looking and I just think a blanket stitch would be adorable on this. Now to save time in today's video because I am gonna do a traditional binding with you, I'm gonna do a free motion stitch because for me that's the fastest. Now, I think the zigzag stitch that we used to sew down all the raw edges would look just as cute on these stars, too. And as far as thread color, I'm going to continue to use the brown thread because I just like the look of the stitch. But uh, if you're worried about how neat your stitches look, I would match your top thread uh, to the fabric that you made your stars from. Same goes for your letters as well, okay? I'm gonna to continue to use the brown thread. But I do need to switch out to my free motion foot. I 
Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I see we still have a green light. That's awesome. I'm going to move that right there for a minute. I'm going to put on this free motion foot. And I hope we don't have any tension issues. I meant to change my needle before today's live. And then I got preoccupied with no internet this morning. But this needle has been sewing together t-shirt quilt parts. So I'm hoping that, that she does okay with the free motion stitches. She has been used quite a bit this week. All right, so for my free motion stitch, I'm gonna to switch to a straight stitch. You could lower the feed dogs if you want to. I'm just gonna keep mine up. <laughs> but I am gonna switch the stitch length to a zero, okay? And I will probably need to adjust the height because last week I messed with the height of my free motion foot, but this week we're using two layers of batting. And you can see, you can't hear it, I can. There's some tension. My free motion foot is dragging on the fabric and we don't want that. So I'm gonna raise up my free motion foot just a little bit. I always forget which way to go. <laughs> raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Raise it up. We want this quilt to just glide underneath that foot. See that? That's much easier. I think we're going to go there. Thank you, Wanda. Mary, each machine is different, right? So on my Juki HZLF600, I'm going to take my hand underneath of this table right here. There's a little lever on the side down here that I switch it over and it lowers the feed dogs. Uh, that switch is different from machine to machine. And some machines are actually quite a few machines don't actually give you the option to lower the feed dogs, but instead they give you a little plastic plate that goes over top of your feed dogs. So uh, I would suggest checking with your specific manual of your machine to see if that's an option to lower the feet or if it came with a plate that covers the feet. I am just, I'm leaving my feed dogs up. Uh, for whatever reason, I have better tension when I leave them up. <laughs> so that's what I do. All right, so we're going to lower that needle. We're going to bring up that bobbin thread. There it is right there. So two threads. And we're going to lower the needle again. I'm going to take a couple little tiny stitches. And that just tied a knot in those threads. And now I can start stitching. Now I might have wanted to <laughs> use a thread that blended in because I can tell my straight lines free motion today with my hands are not going to be that straight, but I'm okay with that. See, I'm going a little bit slower. I'm <laughs> just trying to be careful. And I do think, too, that I could lower this just a little tiny bit. There we go. A lot of the times I make two projects anytime I do a project with you. One to take a picture of to show you you know, what we're making. And 
another one during the video. And what has happened is I have a big stack of completed projects, not kidding, is about this high, double of everything. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm going through quite a bit of materials to do that. So this is the only one that I've made so far. I might want to make more, but I kind of want to go slow because this might be it. And I want it to be neat. All right, I'm gonna jump over to the next star. The good thing for you though, is you can see how far away from the edges I was. Ordinarily, you don't usually have to rotate the project around so much. I'm just trying to do straight lines and I have an easier time going front to back than side to side. I do love this te double batting. I love that. All right, we're going to jump to this last star. I reckon, oh no, it's still pretty dark outside. A lot of times it'll get really dark here and the storm just sort of bypasses us. Hmm. I'm so glad my internet came back on though. Ooh. You can see, I like to start in a straight part of my stars instead of starting at the tips. And that's only because I get prettier tips if I can do that all in one motion versus trying to connect the start and stop right in that tip area. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna st uh, switch over down here to the letters and I'm gonna try to quickly go through those so we can uh, get on to the binding part. Cheryl, yeah, many, uh, like the machine I used to use before getting this one was a Singer Patchwork. And if you look at the manual of that sewing machine, it calls this foot a darning foot. Uh, the Juki calls it a free motion foot, but they all do the same thing. If you have a darning foot, you can absolutely do this. All right, I'm gonna switch right up here and try to speed things up a little bit. That's a lot of little letters to stitch down. 
The good news is the brown thread sort of hides in the darker blue fabric, so I feel like I can go a little bit faster, and it's okay if it's not completely straight. Oh no. I probably I should have switched the needles. Every once in a while I hear it want to skip a stitch. And I think the extra layer of batting, I probably could have upped the size of the needle. So uh, right now I'm using a 1280. If you have a problem, like if you're trying to do this and you're using the two layers of batting and you're getting skipped stitches, try using a bigger needle like a 14, a size 14. And that's what I'm going to do. Y'all want to hang out while I switch the needles? Because huh. I heard it again. I don't want to mess up my project. Hopefully I have some 14s. That's a 10. That's a 10. Oh no. Those are all smaller. Smaller than what I'm using. And these are all 12s. And that's an 11. I don't have any 14s. 1490 is what I'm looking for. And I guess I've used them all up. Shoot. Okay, we're gonna struggle. We're gonna go through it. We're gonna make it work. Wouldn't you know it? I broke the thread, so I'm going to bring up that bobbin thread again. And I might just have to slow down. She goes okay if I go slow. <laughs> the bigger needle, though, would give me the speeds that I'm looking for. Oh. All right, y'all. So we're not going to deal with technical difficulties. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I recommend using the bigger needle. And so, you know what? I'm not going to mess this up because it's super duper cute and I don't want a whole bunch of mess on the back. And that's what I'm going to have if I keep on trying to use this needle and continue doing the free motion stitch. So I'm going to stitch that part after I get some new needles. I will order some this afternoon. So um, yeah, I'm not going to mess it up just for the sake of getting it done during the video. Y'all have seen me stitch down the letters a lot though. Like check out last week's video. I stitched down the letters free motion. So if this is your first time here and you're super disappointed that I'm not gonna continue, <laughs> I just don't wanna struggle live. Go back to last week's video. I stitched down a whole bunch of the letters free motion. Sherry, I need to get some in bulk as well. That's a good idea. So let me just cut these little jump stitches. And I'm gonna cut the big ones on the back. Let 
There we go. So let's just pretend that the letters are stitched down and let's get ready to do some binding. Sherry, uh, the quilt retreat is uh, with Patreon. So let's take this free motion foot off. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. Sheila said, what size is your embroidery machine? Are you asking me, Sheila? Or just in general, a question for everybody? My embroidery machine um, is a Bernina B700. I have the maxi hoop with that embroidery machine. So it's a fairly good size hoop. And I have a couple of smaller hoops in that as well. I think the biggest hoop I have, well, I forget the measurements of it now. <laughs> um, I think at its widest point, I can stitch nine or 10 inches. And then it's like 16 inches long. I'm gonna put on my standard presser foot for my binding. Now again, if you've come in after we got started, the pattern gives you measurements for your back fabric when you cut it to do a self binding, but I cut mine exactly the size of the top, which is 12 inches by 12 inches. And I'm gonna do a traditional, bind traditional binding, but uh, the way that I join my ends is gonna be a, sort of like a little shortcut. All right, so. Let's come over here and start a binding. I've already cut my binding strip and prepared my binding, right? I like cutting most of my bindings at two and a half inches wide and then folding it in half. And so that's what I've done for this particular binding. I'm gonna start my binding over here, right? And you'll see, can you see that? The light is a little off. Uh, it just has a raw edge right there. I'm gonna open this up like so. And I'm gonna fold in. Let's come over here because I actually wanna press it. Yes, I do. I'm ahead of myself. Let's wake up the iron. I actually wanna open this up just a little bit. Watch this. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of glue in there. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna just fold it on an angle. You could do it straight as well, but I find it's a little bit thinner of a join if you do it on an angle. Sheila, I think I'm totally confused because <laughs> I haven't used my embroidery machine today. I folded it in the wrong direction, y'all. Oh. There we go. Let's repress that. Eventually what we're going to do is we're going to tuck the raw edge of the binding when we come back around to where we started and to this little opening. See that? Okay. 
All right, so we have a finished edge there, right? That's not gonna come apart and fray down the road. And that's gonna be the start of our binding. You'll need about 60 inches of binding. Okay, so now let's start again. <laughs> now when I start sewing, Here's my little opening, right? It's gonna be hard to see because that's uh, actually a black fabric. It just kind of wants to blend in with the blue. There's my opening. I wanna come down just a little bit and start below that opening. We're gonna leave all that open for a little bit. And you know what? I'm gonna set my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to add this binding to the back of my project and flip it over to the front. We're going to break all the rules today. <laughs> you want to do that? Let's do that. Again, I'm going to start below that opening and I just set my quarter inch seam allowance. Somehow unthreaded my sewing machine, so give me just a second. Yep, I need to order some needles today. I had a feeling that this needle probably needed to be changed anyway because I've put it through the, ring, the ringer this week. All right, so just like traditional sewing on binding, I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, right? I'm gonna just quickly go through that. And I like to stop about a quarter of an inch away from the edge and do a back stitch. And then we fold over our binding. And because of that double layer of batting, uh, I think I'm gonna have an easier time if I increase my stitch length to like a 2.4. That binding is just blending in with this black, <laughs> the back fabric because it's the same fabric. The only good part about this particular laptop not picking up background noises is you probably cannot hear my bird making his noises right now. Just quickly, just trying to add the binding to the back. I do love the look of a traditional binding.
All right, this is our last corner. I'm going to flip that around. I guess I should have used, for video purposes, a different fabric for my binding. <laughs> it didn't really dawn on me. All right, so here's where I want you to pay attention, right? Here's the edge of my binding. Can we get more light in here? Let's try that. There we go. That's better. Here's uh, my binding, right? The folded edge goes at a diagonal. And here's the opening. So I'm going to bring this binding, and here's where I started stitching. Between here and here, I want to cut off that binding and uh, just like that. And this is going to fit down into that folded opening, right? So I'm just going to lift that up and tuck it right down inside. Now, when I first started doing bindings on my quilts, after years of making quilts, this is how I connected my ends all the time on all my quilts. And eventually, <laughs> um, I got more and more practice in at actually sewing together those ends. But for anybody who hasn't seen how you can just quickly tuck it in, I wanted to just do a refresher on that. And wasn't that a fast way to just connect those ends? <laughs> now it is, so, I mean, it's a little bit more bulky than traditionally sewing those ends together, right? But um, it's a quick and easy way just to get it done. So now I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to turn this binding to the front. Miss Jean, it's a setting on my, on my computer. I wish I could have figured it out. And I actually spent two days a couple of weeks ago researching how to turn that setting off. There's something in the sound card on the particular laptop that I'm using. It's not a microphone setting. It's in the sound card of the particular laptop I'm using. And after wasting two days of trying to figure it out, I just switched the laptop I was using, and then you could hear the sewing machine. But that laptop had a critical error with the hard drive, and Dell says, my hard drive is not under warranty anymore. And it just randomly shuts down, and I didn't want to lose you during the live. So we're using the laptop with the funny sound card. <laughs> So you can't hear the sewing machine. So I'm just tucking or pulling over that binding to the front right, and I'm just gonna do a quick little swipe of a glue stick. Here and there. I'm gonna give this a quick press over to the front. Right? You could use uh, binding clips. A lot of times I just use a binding clip. Matter of fact, I'll use a binding clips in the corners. Like so. And then I'll just dry that glue and fold that binding on the front. There's that join right there, a little bit bulkier than the rest of the binding.
like I said, if you're entering your quilt into a juried book show, you don't want to connect your ends that way. Right? That glue, I just put just enough just to sort of tack these bindings over to the front just long enough to get it sewn down, right? Also, I attach my binding to the back of the quilt first. Today, sometimes I do that on smaller projects. So when I actually sew down this binding, I'll be sewing it down from the front, but instead of next to the binding, I'm going to stitch on the binding. That means my stitch is probably going to show on the back inside my quilt some, and I'll show you what, what that means. There we go. So I'm going to stitch on my binding to permanently keep this shut. But where I stitch it is going to extend not in that ditch next to my binding. Instead, it's going to come ever so slightly into the back of my quilt. And I'm okay with that. Again, if you're putting your quilt in a show, you don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back over here. And I'm just going to go through and sew down this binding. Oh, let's move that needle in the middle. And uh, because I'm doing it this way, I'm going to keep that standard foot on. And uh, I like using a little bit of a longer straight stitch like a 2.4 2.6 on my machine now we're going through several layers of binding fabric and two layers of batting a back fabric and a top fabric i like to increase that stitch length a little bit Sewing, sewing, sewing. <laughs> I feel like I have to talk while I'm at the sewing machine. So there's my little opening. It's a little bit thicker than the rest of the binding. And right here is where we started. All right, so let me just show you what that looks like over here from the front and it's going to be hard to see. See that brown stitch in the binding? I sewed right close to the edge of the binding, right? But I know 
But that means on the back, see that? It's into the back fabric and not right up against the edge of the binding. So that's what happens when you join the binding on the back first and flip it over to the front, right? Um, but I'm okay with that. And there she is. My little letters, I'm going to have to come back and revisit when I get some bigger needles this week. But this is a super, super cute little mini quilt slash trivet. I love the quilty texture. I do think had I not put two layers of batting in this project, the needle, even though I've used it a lot this week, it's the same needle I used last week. It would have had no problem sewing through these words. That extra layer of batting really uh, requires you to up the size of your needle. I really think that. Doreen said, could you sew uh, from the back in the ditch and would it catch the front? Uh, I'm sure it would have caught the front. Uh, but it would have been over away from the edge a little bit, which would have given you a little flappy on your binding, which is totally okay, right? If you don't mind the edge of that binding coming up a little bit. I sometimes like to sew right next to that mm. edge. So that binding is like really, there's hardly any little flap right there. Christine, yes, you can manage this. You could do that. And if the letters are something like you don't want to mess with sewing them down, uh, cut them using a permanent fusible and just fuse them in place and you're done, right? Or try using a fabric marker or fabric paint. And then you don't have to worry about sewing those at all or cutting them out. <laughs> Now, if you do want a cutting file for this, there's a link down in the description box, right? Uh, the Scan and Cut cuts out these letters. I'm sure the Cricut and the Silhouette, they all do. Uh, so quick and accurately. Um, it just saves me so much time having the cutting machine. If you want the cutting file for this, the link is down below. And the PDF for this, the free version, is up for a week. So if anything, grab the PDF while you uh, can get it free. All right, let's come back to this camera here. Y'all, I know I missed a lot of the chat today. I'm so sorry. Yes, 12 inches. That's a good size little trivet, right? If, like if I hold it up this way, I think you get a good idea of the size of this project. It's great for a pot to sit on. It's a great size to hang up on the wall instead of using it as a trivet. I like it. I like the two layers of batting, even though she gave me troubles today. <laughs> Mm. And if you came in after we got started, let me just show you what we're doing next week. For the next couple of weeks, instead of doing complete projects, like today we fused all the pieces and made the layers and did a binding, right? Instead of doing a whole project, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about quilt ideas. I'm going to be giving you applique tracing templates. I will have uh, cutting files available for them, but the templates for tracing will be free. And for the next couple of weeks, we're gonna focus on baby quilts, right? Um, so next week, we're gonna stitch out this baby carriage. And I'm gonna show you uh, how to layer, like what pieces first and how I would stitch this down. And we're gonna stitch it together. And uh, yeah, so this will be the first one of 
we'll just call it the applique series. <laughs> the first video of the applique series will be a baby carriage. Now, coming up after that, um, what have I, I'm working on a teddy bear. And I already did, what was it? Why did I forget that? Oh, what was it? I forget now. I have three already ready to go. <laughs> Deborah said, could I use old towels for batting? Deborah, I think you would be surprised if you were to go into an antique shop, right? And you were lucky enough to find an old antique quilt. And you bought it. And the top had a hole in it. So you needed to deconstruct the quilt. To maybe make a repair on it. Right? I think you'd be surprised on what you found in the middle of that quilt. Back in those days. They used everything inside of quilts. I have a quilt um, that I bought at a flea market for my coffee shop years ago. And that quilt, we've used it so much that it's worn a little hole in the binding. And it, if you look inside that hole, they've used an older blanket inside that quilt as their batting. That quilt is heavy and it is warm. And I love the weight of it. It feels totally different than the quilts that I make because I use, you know, batting and things like that. It has a totally different feel to it. And I actually love it. I think if you're hand sewing through batting and you've used a towel, um, you know, if you're doing it on a sewing machine, you might need to use a bigger needle, right? Um, you might need to change up the thread you're using. If you're hand sewing, maybe tying the quilt <laughs> uh, would be easier than doing an elaborate hand quilting design. I don't know. I haven't done it. But um, I say go for it. <laughs> Sherry, a bear applique. Not a stuffed bear. However... In my shopping cart on Etsy, I have sitting in my cart, and I wish I had the time to just check out and jump into it like this coming week, but I don't. So it's probably going to have to wait a week. But I found a stuffed bear project that you make in the hoop. And I thought, well, I can do that. <laughs> and I've watched the tutorial. There's a tutorial that comes with it, right? And I've watched it. And I think maybe the first one or two times you make the bear might be the most confusing, but overall it looks really easy. And it's a good sized bear. It stands up like 18 inches tall. I think you go through lots of stabilizer doing it this way, but I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I think for me, making a stuffed bear in the hoop would be the way to go. I'm going to give it a shot. Oh, Sue, yeah. Sue said they used to use old army blankets for batting, too. Uh, I don't know if you've ever felt one of those army blankets, but my dad has some. And the ones that he has... Maybe they're wool. I don't know, but they are scratchy. The ones that he has, they're not cuddly blankets, but they are warm. Oh, a rattle. That's a good idea. Linda, that's not it. Hold on a second. But a rattle, I'm going to write that down. Hold on a second. Oh, it's a duck. 
It's a little rubber ducky. How did I forget that? So, can you see that? It's a little duck. <laughs> And then, uh, and then the week after that, we're doing the bear applique. It looks like a little stuffed teddy bear. And a rattle would be a great addition. And my goal is, right, to build up a little library of appliques. So, like, if down the road you have uh, an occasion to make a baby quilt, you have an arsenal of appliques that you could pull out. And uh, you could repeat the same applique in a quilt or you could use this one and that one, or this one, this one, this one, and make up your own little cute quilt, right? And then we'll do some baby appliques for a couple of weeks, or a few weeks, and then we might change it up. And um, I suspect we'll be approaching fall, maybe some fall kind of appliques, Christmas kind of appliques, and um, you know, you can not only make quilt blocks with these appliques, y'all. You could stitch the applique on a t-shirt. <laughs> right? You absolutely could. I don't know that you'd want a baby carriage on your t-shirt. Unless you're the mom of, and you're at a baby shower or something. But coming into Christmas, Christmas appliques, wouldn't that be cute? Okay, everybody. I'm so glad the internet lasted. I was so stressed out for about three hours this morning. I was so stressed out. I'm so glad it's been okay. So uh, for those of you who are on Patreon and you're attending the quilt retreat, I'm gonna be posting that link up in about 15 minutes on the Patreon page and on the Patreon Facebook page, okay? So you can find it in one of those two places and many of you should get an email notification. It doesn't send it to everybody, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but yeah, come hang out with me. We're gonna be here or we're gonna be at the retreat till about 9, 30, 10 o'clock tonight. I'm gonna be working on my Lone Star quilt pieces and like it or not, Lisa, I still have to sew on this t-shirt quilt, and I'll probably do some of that today. Um, so yeah, come hang out with me. Uh, should be a, a really fun time. Set your, uh, set your alarms for next Thursday. I'll be uploading the tracing templates for the baby carriage. Maybe you can go ahead and cut them out and sew with me live next Friday here on YouTube. Miss Hazel, the coffee worked. Susan, it is going to be through Zoom. Yep, and the link to join is on the Patreon page. Cheryl said, I could hear you today. I'm so glad. I don't know what was going on last week, Cheryl, but I'm glad you could hear me today. Um, Jean, we're doing the baby carriage next Friday. Okay. All right, everybody, have a fantastic weekend. Have a safe week. I'll see the majority of you next Friday. I can't wait. I'll see you then. Lord willing, we have internet and my new computer is all hooked up by then. <laughs> okay, everybody. Bye.